Good morning, everybody. Great to be gathered together in the room today, whether you're here or whether you're online. I'm just aware of the number of people who uh, participate online. I had a message this week from Stephen from Mossvale. So, Stephen, I'm saying good day. Good to, good to have you with us. Watches er can participates every week. I've got a mate in England called David who participates every week. I know there's other people who, who participate online every week who are here with us um, in the room. I'm going to say hello Brad, hello Brad, because Brad and Joyce, go, Brad goes home and watches, it feels a bit odd, but hello Brad, and hello Brad. Um, Brad. Brad goes home and watches and participates with Joyce, so hello Joyce too, and uh, um, there'll be other people I know too who participate online that you know, just give me, some, and if you know anyone who says to you they're watching every week, I, know, I think Val Charlton watches most weeks, I think there's, there's a few, so, uh, and Isabel of course, and my mum, I know you'll be there somewhere, so. <laughs> Welcome to you all. It's great to have you as part of us and uh, as we come together um, to sing, to pray. Today as part of our service, there'll be a blessing. Uh, we're going to engage with the word. We're going to celebrate God with us in our midst, in each other. God is here. Just look around. God is in us. And God is acting through us by the Spirit, drawing us to life. So come, let's connect, let's refresh, let's worship. As we do each week, we acknowledge country. So we acknowledge the Dharawal people, the traditional custodians who have cared for the land on which we gather and the waters that surround since time immemorial. In acknowledging country, we also acknowledge history, culture, wisdom, voice and tradition. We pay respects to elders past, present and those emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of this land, especially to any who are here with us this morning. Lord, may your work be done in reconciliation and justice. And whilst I'm sharing acknowledgement, I just remembered I wanted to say um, Brad Waitman um, had, a, um, uh, had his gallbladder out in an emergency kind of procedure earlier in the week, so you might want to hold Brad in your prayers. All right. Uh, each week we light the Christ candle. Is there anyone who'd like to light a candle this morning? Anybody feeling like that would be something they'd like to do as an act of life or faith or hope? Is there a, oh, thanks Brian. You've got to be quick. <laughs> Jesus said, Whenever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst. We light the Christ candle, acknowledging Jesus here with us today. If you're able and would like to, um, I'm going to invite us to stand and sing. Gather us in.
You may be seated. Uh, let's come to God in prayer. And today's prayer has a bit of basis in the last three or four psalms of the... Uh, um, oh, Isabel's just written one of the top ten. So in the survey, I think that would be one of Isabel's top ten. <laughs> Gather us in. Good to see you with as well. All right, let's... Work. Our, uh, our prayer of praise this morning has a sort of... The last three or four psalms of, of the book of Psalms from about 146 to 150, it's sort of taken with that as its context. Let's come to God in prayer. Loving God, we gather to celebrate your presence here. With us, within us, through us, we gather to sing your praise on this new day. We gather to celebrate all that you have done for us from the time of creation, throughout history, and even today. And there are lives here today, even our own lives, that are testament to your goodness and faithfulness, that sustains loves and nurtures. We give thanks for the vastness that is beyond us, the sun, the moon, the unnumbered stars that light up the universe and tell of your greatness. For the creatures that swim and crawl and climb and walk and fly, For the creatures, Lord, including us, blessed by your goodness. Lord, for all that reveals who you are, for your tender love and gentle concern, for your care and compassion and justice, we give thanks. For your words of love and truth, For your grace that sees who we are and who we could be and accepts and forgives the difference, we give thanks. For your constant seeking, for your reaching out to us to heal and to draw us to you, pursuing us, even those of us who don't want to be found. Those of us who choose different pathways, sometimes even destructive ones, Lord, you still reach out. And we give thanks. Lord, we gather today, we sing, we pray, we praise you, our majesty, our great and loving God. By your spirit and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand. <coughs> Again, this is our passing of the peace for this week. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Live in harmony with one another. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. My friends, may the peace of the Lord be alive in you and be with you. Thank you. I invite you to pass the peace with those around you. We're going to sing. Um, so you may want to stay standing for that. Uh, and I think the children are staying in today. Is that right? Yes. yes okay, good. No, that's all right. That's all right. That's, uh, that's good. All right. Well, um, we will um, stand together and sing. Be still for the presence of the Lord.
Morning. How are you all? <laughs> okay. First reading come from Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Jesus continue. If another member of the church sins against you, Go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen, even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Okay, next reading from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 10. Oh, no one anything except to love one another. I like this part. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we give thanks.
It's a bit more of a nuts and bolts passage, isn't it? It's not a, it's not a blue sky, this is the, a lovely part of the, what the world could be like passage this morning. It's got some nuts and bolts stuff about human relationships in it. And I want to start with this word. It's a, quite a serious word, and that is to say, um, what, anything I say after this little bit, uh, what I'm about to say doesn't kind of apply, all right? Like, what, what it, it, it's different process. So if you've ever experienced at the hand of someone in the church, in the church community, um, if you've ever experienced sexual abuse or power abuse over you, or if you are experiencing these things, spiritual abuse, mental abuse, all right, abuse is different. And, I'm, and I don't want, to, don't want you to interpret this passage of scripture pushing you to go and confront somebody on your own to start with. Maybe not even at all. Right, we've got processes for that kind of stuff. And it's not this one. The difference is, the reason why I'm drawing that, um, that distinction is because the word in the scripture is sin. And as I've been interpreted for you a number of times, sin is missing the mark. The big category of sin that comes under the, t- the title of sin is missing the mark. Abuse is evil. Right? Evil works with intent. And they're two different things. Right? So we've got a safe church person, it's Sandra. And if you, if you, if you, to send, so if you're actually experiencing, if this triggers stuff for you that's either gone on in your past or, or go, is going on now, then please come and talk to Sandra or myself or somebody else you feel safe with to have a conversation. We're not trying to push you to go and confront somebody for whom, with whom there's a difficulty. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because the two are different, all right? And I, and I want to set this up as a safe place for you in anything I'm about to say. So where do you find God in conflict? Because, I mean, reading the scriptures, I I think it would be really, and watching the church in action, I think there's probably often, um, you'd think God would be found in one of these two places. Either God's the um, instigator of conflict, like God's telling people to go to war and take land and kick people out and I'll be with you always and, you know, like, like cross red, cross seas, they'll part for you, you know kill the firstborns, all that kind of stuff. Um, It it would be easy to think that God actually has an appetite for conflict and for war and for hatred. It would be really easy to interpret God that way. The other way to interpret where God is in the middle of conflict is to think that God is an avoider. (laughs) That when hard times, when, when conflict comes up, if you watch the church quite regularly, People put the, you know, people run away from conflict. We run away. Or we go quiet. But I actually think in watching Jesus and listening to Jesus when it comes to conflict and when it comes to difficulty in human relationships, God in the midst of conflict is the voice that is trying to draw us to reconciliation and restoration and life. Jesus is always the filter if you want to know how to deal with the angry God, don't try and squeeze that God into Jesus. Go the other way around. Make God fit Jesus. Make, make, you know, like God, Jesus is the most obvious example we have of what God is like. So if you can't see it in Jesus, then we have to be prepared to say there are things that are written in the scriptures that probably don't apply so closely to God. Make sense? Yeah, all right, you may not agree with it, but it makes sense. Thanks for your politeness. But the voice of God in the midst of conflict is always the voice that is trying to draw us to reconciliation with our neighbour, with our enemy. It's the voice that's trying to draw us to peace within the conflicts that go on inside ourselves. The voice of God is always that, that voice that's trying to bring peace and life and reconciliation, restoration, those kind of things. So if you're looking for God's voice in the midst of difficulty, that's where it is. Now let me say about today's passage, I don't want to treat the Bible and I don't want to treat Jesus like he's writing a textbook about human relationships. Okay, there are some things that are there in the scriptures that sometimes we have to say, these things apply most closely to first century Judaism. 
or first century Jewish people culture. And there are some things that we have to reinterpret for our own times. So I don't think everything always fits neatly and, and tightly. And I'm sure what Jesus was saying made perfect sense to the people he was listening to. And I think there are some great words of wisdom in the passage of scripture that I am going to lean into today, but I might leave other little bits out or I might bypass them a little bit because I don't know they fit so closely for us. But, um, but I think today's passage of scripture holds some really great anchor points for how to deal with conflict. And it might go really, really in different directions to where you are at and how you normally deal with conflict. Because most of us hate conflict. I do. I don't like conflict at all. And I'm a bit of an avoider, usually. But here's some things. And look, let me just say I was out for dinner with a couple of non-churchy, non-Christian friends last night. And I tested a bit of this on them. And I think some of the things that come out out of Jesus' mouth actually work. Not just for Christian community, but for all kinds of different community, all types of different relationships. So I have confidence that what I'm sharing actually makes sense. So here we go. So today's one, as I said, is a bit more of nuts and bolts. It's a bit more of how to. You don't get that a lot from me, I know. I'm a bit more of the out here, if we all just love each other, it's all going to be fine. Okay. But today's got a bit more nuts and bolts. And it always applies, still applies, if we love each other, it's all going to be fine. All right, as Far pointed out, there's a lovely line there about we owe nothing to each other other than to love each other. And let that be the underlying, the foundation of what I'm saying today. The first thing I want to say, and I'm, le- and I'm leaning a little bit into, um, um, there's a woman by the name of Debbie Thomas who, who writes under a, a, like on a, web, on a, a blog called um, Journey with Jesus. So some of the categories, even though I'm going in different directions with some of the things she says, some of the things, the way I've separated this out come from Debbie and I'm really thankful for her work. The first thing I want to say is this. Choose depth. It's easy to dive in the shallow end of the pool, but choose depth. The way to deal with conflict in a shallow way is to avoid it. The way to deal with conflict in a shallow way is to throw a tantrum. Put your hand up and walk away. Turn your back. The way to deal with conflict in a shallow way is to assume the other people know what you're thinking. The way to deal with conflict shallowly is to go home and win the argument, and lie in bed and win that argument in your head and have a great line for next time. Now, as I see all the smiling faces, you all know what I'm talking about. I'm king of this. I have great arguments at, at night in my, on my own in bed at 11 o'clock. I've got great lines for anybody and everybody. You know what I'm talking about. The way to deal with, with um, conflict shallowly is revenge, is to plot revenge. How am I going to get them back? I'm reminded out of, by a line from Paul Kelly out of one of his songs, which says quite simply... Um, Revenge is a dish best served up cold. Revenge digs two graves, makes a young person old. It's going to kill you. Revenge is a bit like, as I think I've heard somebody else say, it's a bit like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. If you want to get really bitter, then these are really shallow ways to deal with conflict. Another really shallow way to deal with conflict is to assume the other person is totally in the wrong. I'm totally in the right, you're totally in the wrong. That's the only one way to view this and that's the way. A really, another really shallow way to deal with conflict is to gossip, to slander, to tell stories, really, really shallow. It lacks any depth and it lacks respect. So how do we go deep with conflict? Today's passage of scripture, I think, draws us in a couple of different directions, or similar directions, sorry, which gives us some pointers, some anchor points. The first thing is that I love about today's passage is to seek relationship first. Right? So 
if you remember in the way that Jesus is saying, if you can't find agreement with somebody or there's damage going on, if someone is sinning against you, if someone is missing the mark, and that missing the mark could be recklessness, it might be neglect, it might be carelessness, it might be unintentional. You don't really know until you've had a conversation, do you? You can assume that's shallow end. The deep end is to go and find out what's going on. Go deep. Be courageous. Take healthy risks. In other words, be prepared to be vulnerable, but don't put your like like but be prepared to listen. And be prepared not to react out of your emotions, but to try and listen carefully and to hear what's going on. Don't listen out of pain. Listen out of promise. What could be here? Engage and seek healing. All right? That's what I think are some of the underlying um, tenets of, of, um, of going deep. And in today's passage of scripture, the first thing Jesus says to do is go and talk to someone one on one. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, if you can, if you're able to. Again, I'm going to reiterate, I'm talking about sin, not evil. I'm talking about where things have gone slightly wrong, not abuse. The first thing that I think, well, well I think the beauty of, of that kind of line of, of going at things is that it prever- preserves dignity. You haven't dehumanised the other person and made them a problem. When you go to someone one-on-one, hopefully you're going with the attitude there is a problem and I'm here to try and work out with you what that is. And I'm going to tell you what's going on for me. This is how I'm experiencing it. That's totally different to going to somebody and saying, you're wrong, I'm right, this is the damage you are doing to me. You are making me feel... Oh, boy, okay. As soon as as you open up with a line, you are making me feel, you're going shallow. Because no one's making you feel anything. You are having feelings as a response to what's going on. Going deep means that you preserve the dignity of the other person. In other words, you don't assume what's going on. You start with them in a a person-to-person meeting. It's appreciative inquiry. Judy's got to catch a train, don't you, Judy? That's all right. It's not, you're, not av- you're not avoiding, are you? You'll watch later online, won't you? <laughs> yeah, Judy did tell me she was leaving. Um, so, so, appreciative inquiry, being able to name what's going on, and this is how I'm experiencing it. Can you tell me how this is going for you? What, what's going, what do you think's happening here? Because this is how I am experiencing what is going on. Don't go with the element of surprise. That's not dignified. Remember, as I said, if you've been stewing on this for six weeks and you go to somebody, don't ambush them. Like, like, or, or at least expect them to be a little surprised by this. Give them the room to think. Give them the room to, 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 to work through what's going on for them. A lot of people, I think, when conflict comes up, as I say, assume the other person is in the same space as them. So when I turn up to talk to you, you're ready for this conversation. You know what's going on and you can answer me. It doesn't work that way. Dignity allows the other person to work their stuff through with you. It may, meet, may, meet one, it may need one or two or three meetings to have the real conversation. Don't ambush. You're ready. They're not. The next thing I want to say, after choosing depth and preserving dignity, if, and Jesus says, if, you, if, you, if you've managed to sort this out, fantastic, reconciliation, beautiful, celebrate it, embrace it. But sometimes and often it doesn't work out that way. So what do you do next? And still under the, under the category of preserving dignity, you, st- you know where gossip fits on this you know, like I'm not, you know where gossip fits? What step is gossip or revenge or attack? 
It's not any of them. At no point do you suddenly get permission to shift gear into those kind of things. The Jesus way. Because the Jesus way is what you do next, is you go and check in with somebody else and take one or two people with you for the conversation. I want to reiterate the words of scripture where it says, If you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. The evidence of every word. Their words and your words. All right? So when you're taking two or three people, it's not that you're taking co-conspirators to attack somebody or ambush somebody. You're taking people who are prepared to listen to both sides and to help both of you work through what's going on. Do you hear that? It's, there's, still no, there's still no permission to ambush somebody or attack them. Because God is always trying to seek and draw us to reconciliation and restoration in life. So you take one or two people with you, two or three I think it says, and people are there to help both sides be heard, to seek reconciliation, to give space for apology and for amends. Now what happens if you've had that conversation and it's still not going well, <clears throat> and the two or three have come with you, and it, there is consensus that the, the other party is the person who's really got the work to do on themselves to get sorted out here. Does anybody really know? Because in the church we never get this far. <laughs> we don't get this far. If we're being honest with ourselves, we don't take these processes. And I doubt there'd be very many people in the room with a lot of experience about what to do next. And I'm not one of them either. I'm not pointing a finger at you and saying, you don't get it right. I'm saying, we don't get it right. And I've been part of some really ugly processes in the church at times. I've had to sit in groups and in councils and committees and tell people, or in, in special processes, disciplinary processes, and say to people, this is as far as it goes. I'm sorry, but this is as far as you go in your position or your leadership, your role. It's not pretty, it's ugly, it's hard. But that's what Jesus says comes next. Your love, in a sense, is still there for the person who you're having, who, who, it's not just you now, there are others who have difficulty with. But your love and your, your guarding, if you like, shifts to the wider com church community. In other words, if this person thinks that these behaviours and this activity and these thoughts are okay, then we actually need to protect the rest of the community from it. Make sense? We don't ever, we very rarely ever get to that space. But that's what the passage of scripture is saying. Don't let it hemorrhage any further. Don't let the damage go further. It's time to throw out um, politeness. It's time to throw out the idea of, um, I can't even read my own writing there. <laughs> it's time to bind it. It's time to say this is going no further. And love shifts from the person who is now offending, if you like, to the community of love and the people who you share, in, who seek community together. Again, it's not pretty, it's ugly. It can be ugly. It takes courage. And Jesus says, you are to treat them, the best way to do, deal with this is to treat them like a tax collector or a Gentile. Now that might sound like now, finally I get to make an enemy. Finally, finally I can start 
shaking my dust and off my feet and walking away and saying, you're in the wrong, I'm in the right, I've got proof, people are on my side, you're in the wrong. Maybe that's what it's saying when it says a Gentile or a tax collector. Maybe. But tell me how does Jesus treat Gentiles and tax collectors? It's not like that. He recognises there being their outsidership, if you like. Gentiles and tax collectors are considered outsiders. But the heart of Jesus is always open. The door's always open. The table always has food on it. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. If you think that line means it's a feast for you, you're missing the point of the line in the psalm because what it's saying is it's a feast, it's a feast for two. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. So, so there's kind of like this sense that at no point does hatred get to win. There's no point does hatred get to be your narrative or your leading line where your heart gets to sit for a while. Because even after you've gone through these difficult processes, there should still be room for restoration. The hope is always that we are heading towards love together. God's heart of hospitality is always open. So should ours be. I just want to finish here. Is that enough? Your head's full? Yeah. yeah. Feel free, if, you, if you've been through this with me today and you're kind of going, oh, I don't like Jesus. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like what that's saying. I don't, like, I don't like where this is headed. I don't like, oh, Graham, why, you know, surely. I've, and if you want to walk out the door and tell me about someone who you still feel the need to hold on to revenge or anger for, then please don't tell me on the door on the way out. All right? <laughs> hold it and come and have a conversation with me and I'll pray with you. Not that, not that you will get it right, but not, 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 that, not that you will, I will pray with you and we will talk about it and we will share. All right? This is really important stuff because if you stay bound, as per this passage of scripture, if you stay bound in hatred or anger or revenge or whatever, you are bound on earth. You've allowed yourself to be bound. Your life has shrunk. And today's passage of scripture is offering new life to us all. Because our God, as you might have heard me say right near the start, or it's been turned up in our liturgy so far today a number of times, our God is a God of peace. And sometimes peace takes hard work. You've got to have an appetite for it. You've got to have a heart for it. But peace works. God's peace works. That's where the spirit, that's where you'll find the spirit of God trying to lead you to peace and reconciliation and love. Always let love be your guide. Amen. Oh. Let's sing. I've picked, a, picked this next song because it's a song that I really, I really love it because it, it sort of meets me in two places. One is what's going on that's difficult right now and the other one is what do I do in the midst of that which is difficult, which I think conflict often is. So that's why we're singing How Long. Let's stand together and sing.
On behalf of our church council, welcome to uh, our worship time together, both here in the room and further afield. Uh, our new sheet is uh, is with us with our, our regular inclusions there. There are a couple of things that just need uh, some quick highlighting. Um, this is the second and final week for our music in worship surveys to come in. We need uh, printed versions uh, into the white box on the table just outside here um, by next Sunday. Uh, and uh, it's an open invitation from Church Council for, for all to contribute. There's no predetermined um, outcome on what we're looking for. We actually want your feedback from all of our traditions and, uh, uh, and expectations so that we can uh, move our fellowship included forward. That's what we're after. Um, another big deal that's come out of uh, recent considerations are the community helpers, uh, community hampers, I'm sorry, get my wording right. Um, built out of our end meet campaign, uh, but further opportunities to share with our, our local community at their points of need. So there's some suggestions in there of items that we would like uh, donated and included. There will be a, uh, a container uh, established in our coffee space out here for during the week so that uh, uh, items can be included in there that we can build into, into hampers and share uh, with people known to us who are in need. So uh, we'd like our congregation to uh, join with us in that project and uh, it's been endorsed by Church Council to, um, to begin that process. So that's in there as well. Uh, last one from me, uh, Graham mentioned last week, the information included in here on church membership. Um, the Uniting Church wants to be inclusive, so in our endeavour to be inclusive, we sometimes give out the impression that um, we're a little relaxed about some of the arrangements, but there are times when rules still apply, and, and so membership in the church, there's three categories of membership there, so please reflect on that information, because historically this has been an area of concern and angst over you know, what that looks like and who's allowed to vote in management meetings like our congregational meetings. Um, it's really 
in plain English. Thank you, Graham. Um, explained there, so please have a read through that and uh, and have a chat to Graham if uh, if that makes some suggestions in your heart of how to move forward. So on that point, before our prayer time, no, I'll give a hand back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Brad. Thanks so much for the announcement. So. Um, um, this is a really lovely time in the life of our congregation. I'm going to invite um, Angie and, and Duan, if you'd like to come forward, please. So uh, I did put a little note and use a note, so if this comes as a surprise to you, then I'm sorry, but uh, here, I'm going to invite you to come forward, please. Come out, come out. Let me introduce to you, uh, this is uh, Juan and, and uh, Angie. Great. I'll get you to come and stand up here with me. That's okay, please come, please come. So, um, there are times in our life as a church when there's a privilege of being a part of people's most innermost and sacred times in life. And this is one of those sacred times. Later in life, you don't mind me saying that to you? No? Angie and, Angie and Juan, because uh, they told me very clearly, we're not teenagers, all right? So <laughs> just in case there was any confusion. Um, Angie and, and Juan have met each other and their love is new. It's blossoming, it's blooming, it's growing. Um, and as part of their growing love and commitment, they seek to acknowledge God in the midst with them. Yes, it's a lovely space to be in. It's a privilege to be with you here today. Thank you for asking us and inviting us. So, um, so Juan and, uh, and Angie have been part of our worshipping life together now. They've been coming for a while. And uh, they came to seek me about a blessing for their relationship. And, um, and they seek God's blessing for this time in their life together and for the time ahead. Now, here's the, little, uh, the lovely little part. They met at Living English. So, so let me just say, if you're looking for a... No, I won't say that. <laughs> English, living English, that's right. But you've got a lovely story about, about having met, seen each other across the table at afternoon tea and, uh, and, and Juan just... And someone else wanted to chat to him. He said, no, no, I'm going to go and sit over there next to Angie. And, uh, and, and so they come this morning with the blessing of many of the uh, Living English students who have been, uh, yeah, I know Lizette's here and Ria's here and is there anyone else from Living English that I've missed that, that's here as well, um, that people come, they're coming with the blessing, that, of course all the tutors and all the teachers and that sort of stuff are here. Um, this is a lovely time. Um, and so they come with the blessing of the students of Living English, they come with the blessing of the tutors, I think they do anyway, and um, I think everyone's got a big smile on their face when we talk about it. And let me just say, I know we're going a little over time, but there's going to be cake after this, all right? So please, just bear with us, all right? And so they want, and, and, and both Angie and Ryan wanted to, this little part of the service to be part of a Sunday service. That, that's where they place God in the middle of all this. So I'm going to ask you, as we go into this little time of blessing, Juan and Angie, do you seek God's blessing on your relationship? You do. Now, is there anything you want to say? I'm doing a lot of talking. Is there anything you want to say? You don't have to say anything, but it's okay. It's all right. I didn't give you any warning. That's all right. So I'm going to ask the congregation a question now, all right? I'm going to ask you a question because blessings are, are kind of, aren't just this thing out here. Blessings are about us doing it together. That's right. So the answer, when we get to that point, is in the love of God we do, all right? In the love of God we do. So I'm going to ask you a question. So to the congregation, do we give our blessing to this union? And together we say, in the love of God we do. Yay! God gives love between two people. There are a number of different reasons, but I think God gives love between two people so that lives might flourish, both in union together and individually, so that joy may be found and that generosity will be shared. God gives love between two people so that arms will be widened 
hearts will grow and our communities might benefit from all that brings. So, I'm going to invite you to stand and I'm going to invite you to stand facing each other and I'm actually going to stand here. So I'm going to invite you to stand and face each other. <laughs> Holding hands. I want you to hold hands. And I want to ask anybody else who's part, who know these two, who would like to come and be part of this blessing. I'm inviting you to come as well and just to, like, just to be here with, around and to hold hands or to, to, put out, you know, to give a blessing as we go. Pastor, thank you. That's all right. It's okay. <laughs> so big. You know, this wonderful. Yes. I did not expect this. That's all right. That's okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. We love you too. Yes. It might get a couple of photos if that's all right. Come up, Rhea. Come on, Rhea. Up you come. I know you want to come. Here she comes. All right. All right. So just put, just put a hand. Just put, might just want to come around the side so people can see. That's right. Here we go. I'm inviting you to hold hands. All right. Oops. There we go. Hold hands. There we go. All right. Juan and Angie, receive the blessing of God and of all of us who are here. May you be blessed with the love that comes from true companionship, from nurturing and caring for each other, through good times and through hard, through joy and through sorrow, through unity of purpose, and struggling with all those times when wine is clearly in the wrong. <laughs> May you be blessed with God's peace as you continue to take this journey of love together. I'm going to pray for you now. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. This morning we give thanks, Lord, for your steadfast love, your endless mercy and your great faithfulness. And we see your goodness and your mercy and your love and your faithfulness in this uni union that Angie and Juan are forming. Give them patience, wisdom, kindness, joy, peace, companionship and creativity as they continue to uncover their differences. And Lord, may they enjoy the unity of love. May their relationship be a place of hope and inclusion for many. Be with them, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I said, there'll be cake. Um, there's actually some birthday cake as well. I, I know you sang me happy birthday last week. I'm not expecting you to do it again, but there's some birthday cake. And, uh, well, I've got, actually, my choice of, of cake is baked cheesecake. So there you go. That's my birthday cake. And um, there's some cupcakes. There's even, so I've got some gluten-free cakes for those people who are gluten-free. So there's some cupcakes out there that are gluten-free. Um, and there's some plenty of food we're going to share together in a, a little morning tea afterwards to celebrate um, Juan and, uh, and Angie together. Thank you. David, I'm going to invite you to come and bring the prayers. Thank you. Good morning. Let us pray together. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbours as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. St Paul implores us now is the moment to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we be became believers, for the night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. As we enter the season of spring, we are frequently reminded that life is bursting through from the depths of winter. The yellow flowers from wattle are in bloom. 
Lambs and calves are in the fields. Leaves are returning to the trees. Flying foxes are on the wing. Snakes and lizards are re-emerging from hibernation. Daffodils and jonquils push their way up through the ground into flower. We smell cut grass. We witness the sweeping of magpies. We thank you for the beauty of the natural world. Breathe life back into us at this time. Give us your joy and peace. Remind us that everything is unfolding as it should and that we should not give way to worry. For the night is gone. The day is near. Help us to look at our lives the way you look at them, to accept the way we are. May your light shine into our dark places and may this illumination bring transformation. Shine your light into our life here at Coral Uniting Church and banish our darkness. Bring your joy and peace. Burn to ashes the structures, attitudes and systems which are resisting your Holy Spirit. Burst into our life here, for the night is gone, the day is near. We pray for those of us or those known to us who are sick or suffering in body, mind or spirit. Bring healing and peace to all those affected. God of mercy and healing, you hear the cries of those in need. Receive these petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort and courage. May we take a moment now to bring these people to you in our hearts. We pray for those who suffer for their faith. May they be comforted and remain able to speak truth to power. We pray for situations of war around our world. Afghanistan, Central African Republic, Ethiopia, Libya, Mali, South Sudan, Syria, Algeria, Mexico, and Ukraine, amongst others. Bring peace to these situations, Lord, and ease their grief so that healing and the rebuilding of lives can take place. We give thanks that the date of the referendum over the voice to Parliament has been called. But the conflict between the yes and no camps has been a cause for national sadness. And the manipulation and deception of the public by some politicians and media conglomerates has been shameful. Barely a Christian today would imagine that William Wilberforce's campaign to abolish slavery in the late 19th century would have encountered opposition. But sadly, many Christians labelled his actions divisive and not of the gospel. Christ, we are reminded that through the big issues of any time, you bring a sort of division and not peace. Each of us is being tested as to which side of the fence we'll choose, making a principled choice which leads to freedom and truth, or to give way to the voices of fear-mongering and division. We thank you that we've been given free will, but are reminded that each of us makes, must take responsibility for our choices. When the dust has settled, may those who've spread fear and misinformation around the voice referendum reflect upon their actions. And may the integrity and goodwill of the sincere be their forgiveness. St Paul urged those in the early church in Rome to lay aside the works of darkness, to put on the armour of light, to live honourably as in the day. Holy God, you call us to righteousness and light. Teach us the undivided law of love, that we may love your children even as you do. Love you with all our will and strength and find our freedom in this blessed service. Taught to us in word and deed by Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Amen. Thanks, David. Um, just before, while people are sitting down, I'm wondering, is there, do the children have anything they want to bring up this morning? Or I, there, there's, no, there's no pressure, but if you no, that's a no, thumbs down, Isabel, that's okay. Hey, oh, Rebecca. What have you been working on this morning? Oh, it looks good. Wow. Do you want to come in? I've got a stand here for you. Do you want No, you some, how about I show it up? All right, there we go. Beautiful. No, you don't want to talk about this, okay? I can see clouds and sun and garden, new life. Beautiful. Well done. And um, Rachel? Ashy did that. All right. Fantastic. And Isabel, you've been writing. Lovely. Journaling, have you? Writing about what's been going on. Fantastic. Well done. We all have different expressions of where we're, how we're going, Fanta of what we're doing. Fantastic. How we're seeing God. Is that right? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks for bringing those up. All right. We're going to uh, have the song, Hear Our Praises. Let's stand together and sing, if you're able. to have uh, all the Hamiltons back, but um, 
Um, but, uh, and I really appreciate that we have a plethora of people with um, music gifts and, and in your absence, Stephen, it's, we've had some wonderful people filling in, but good to have you back too. All right, let's give our offering tree prayer. Um, giving God, we dedicate our offerings, our gifts, our talents, ourselves to you, to use and to grow for your work of love in the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, go forth in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Honour all people. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Help the afflicted. Support the weak. And in so doing, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.